Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumpstart Lighting episode. Today I have a very special guest. I have John Joyner uh, joining me to talk to me about Azure Arc enabled servers, Azure policy, the new book that he wrote, um, and everything in between. So join us. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Leo is here. We're in another Jumps Like 19 episode. Today I'm uh, joined by John. Hey John, how are you doing? Hello, Leo. Doing great. Um, you know, I've been I've been waiting to talk to you. I know that you have some cool stuff to show me today. I know that we have like a cool demo and you wrote a book, but first thing first, uh, can you tell the audience uh, who you are and what is it that you do? Thanks, Leo. Uh, well, I work with you, uh, you know, developing the Microsoft solutions, and that's why I am also delighted to spend some time with you because we've been working together on projects for a, a good while. Uh, I'm the uh, director of technology at a Microsoft Gold Partner Accountability, and uh, we provide MSP, MSSP services uh, to customers. Uh, my role right now is uh, basically as a middleman between our sales process and our SOC and knock back in processes, and mm. I'm solving customer needs uh, using the Azure tools that we're going to be talking about today. Very cool. And you know, uh, John, partners is a very uh, is a topic that is very close to me because uh, in my previous role, before taking this role that I'm at right now, I was part of the Microsoft uh, partner organization. Um, you know, obviously familiar with accountability and, uh, you know, I'm happy that I have a I have this chance to uh, talk to you. So, you know, John, first thing first, um, you guys, you and Steve Buchanan, which was also a guest on our show, you guys uh, wrote this awesome book that, uh, you know, I'm going to show the audience here, um, which is uh, Azure Arc enabled uh, servers and Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes, it covers those areas. Um, and I know that you've been focusing on the Azure Arc enabled servers. So talk to me about it. Like, um, you know, what was the motivation? Uh, talk to me a bit about the, the thought process for, you know, for this book. Sure. Um, you know, Azure Arc is, is, is like paradigm shift is is not a big enough word to describe for 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 me what azure arc represents and um uh i guess it is for me what's so exciting to, to trying to distill it down to just a nugget it's the competitive advantage that adopters of this type of hyperscale management technology bringing mm -hmm. it down to your data center regardless of your size latching into that the proven economics you know this stuff is economics driven, right? It's unstoffable. Um, and it's it's great to, you know, having a lifetime fast, lifelong fascination with management, network management. You know, um, I, uh, I like two things that you said, John. Um, I like the fact that you said that uh, paradigm shift is not a big enough, you know, <laughs> word to describe this. But also I really like the fact that you connected that to the economics uh, of it. Can you, Maybe talk to me about this a bit more. Like, how how do you think this entire Azure Arc space is really impacting directly this economics notion mm -hmm. that you're talking about? Well, thank you. You know, um, cloudy systems are always going to win over non-cloudy systems. You know, for the reasons that cloud uh, exists. You know, mm -hmm. on-demand, self-service, granular, chargeback, pooled resources, etc. You know, and um, this is the opportunity to snap into that proven mm. with decades now of experience, prove it that that unstoppable power of cloud design on the management side, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, 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 the Azure Arc is perfectly a uh, user, you know, on demand service because uh, you decide what to do with it. You know, it's yeah. a vehicle, it's a de vehicle to deliver your management services. And guess what? It's virtually free, virtually free. And uh, not only is it virtually free from a licensing viewpoint, but it's 100% mm -hmm. free from care and feeding, from the upkeep, from the management, from the, you know, Microsoft is optimizing this stuff already faster than you ever could, frankly, mm -hmm. you know? And it, again, it's a paradigm shift in, in, in how we can use our, our noggins to improve the business bottom line because the, the technical, mm -hmm. you know, pain points keep getting ironed out. You know, the uh that comment that you made around this is this is growing fast uh i you know i i i strongly agree with this i think that the arc space is just blazing fast it's a rocket ship in terms of uh what is it that we're doing and how fast it really progressing and impact directly not just the partner ecosystem but obviously as a result the customer ecosystem um so 
Uh, I can definitely relate to that. I want to shift gear for a second, John. Um, you and I, we talked about in the context of the book that uh, you and Steve wrote, we talked about this notion of community and what was the what was the need from a community standpoint to write that book. Talk to me about that. Okay, um, that 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 gets me thinking. You know, it, Microsoft, frankly, Microsoft has had has struggled mm -hmm. with with uh, particularly service provider side management uh, and the story of from mom to system center um, several you know, we won't even go there right uh, and so uh, the, this finally cracked the it like solved the problem mm. and Microsoft is I think they're slow internally to realize the potential because of the history um, that's where me as a longtime MVP, I didn't mention I'm a Microsoft uh, MVP for yeah. cloud and data center. It's my 14th year. And so I've That's been impressive. part of it. Thank That's you. Impressive. I've been proud of, proud of the journey, proud of the journey. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it, we've, we've gone from, from, from the light to the dark and now back in the light. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's again, just for it, for someone that has a, a like I was saying before, a, a lifelong fascination with network management. This is, this is mm -hmm. a, a second lease. Uh, a supercharging of something that I've always been chasing after. And, and uh, like I say, it's unstoppable. And the people that, that real, get the word right now and start managing their estates with the yeah. same ruthless efficiency that the, you know, that arm template driven deployment mm -hmm. requires like something, a, a, a key that gets turned and, and a productivity engine gets, gets engaged. Uh, you know, you just got to try it. You'll see what I'm talking about. So, you know, talking about, you know, let's see what, you know, what you're talking about. Uh, before the episode, you and I talked about how passionate you are, and so am I, about this notion of policy-driven management. Um, and how do you actually go by and do that? So I know that you have a cool demo to show me. Uh, so let's just, you know, let's just get into it and, and, and see what's what. Thank you. Um, I, it, you know, in an in example of the synergies uh, that community fosters, yeah. um, I just wrote uh, a featured article in my blog on the exact topic that Lior asked me about. And we didn't collab on this at all. I don't, Lior, did, did you didn't know that I wrote this article last week? Uh, no, not before, you know, not before you told me. <laughs> you know, and not so that's, that's that like policy is where it's at. And uh, I wrote this article to describe how you can use Azure policy in a, in a, in a new way uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's security centric. But for this demo, just a couple, three minute, maybe four minute demo at the most sure. is, is I'm going to show you, uh, and this is from a chapter in the book, and it's how to uh, deploy Azure policy, this initiative right here. We're going to dive mm -hmm. into this initiative, what it looks like and how you use it and how everybody, everybody, every Microsoft customer with an Azure presence should be deploying this initiative, right? Yeah. Because this initiative is uh, is a tonic, okay? So this initiative has been uh, assigned uh, to my lab environment, and this could be assigned to your uh, enterprise. And right away, I can see that um, four out of six machines in my enterprise are compliant. Uh, they are connected to Azure Monitor. And yeah. when we say connected to Azure Monitor, that means Defender for Cloud, Sentinel, Right, most Microsoft management technologies depend on what we call the Microsoft Management Agent or the Azure Log Analytics Agent, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. client agent to do their work. Yeah. Um, and so this policy, I'm going to click into it now. It's a, rather in its initiative, and uh, an initiative uh, is is a bundle of two or more policies that are then you know uh, deployed to, as one initiative rather than 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 a dozen independent policies, and then managed as one initiative. And this initiative has ten policies in it. And this is where I show, I mean, hopefully for some people, the light bulb goes on on, on uh, like what ARC does. So here mm -hmm. I have, you know, if we look, if we look in the bottom half of this, uh, this display, you can see um, we're, we're, we're targeting basically the four populations of servers that customers have in the real world. They have mm -hmm. servers in Azure and they have servers not in Azure. Right. And the servers are either running the Windows OS or they are running the Linux, a, Linux, a version of Linux. Um, and this one policy targets all four of those uh, hmm. variations of server together. For example, this policy that I'm just selecting at random deploys the dependency agent for Azure Arc on Linux servers. So this is yep. the one of the two agents that your that your servers use to communicate to the uh, Azure solution. And specifically, the dependency agent is providing the network. Uh, interface information. What we we consider almost the, the the flow data to the VM is coming uh, from this dependency agent. And to be fully instrumented, a machine needs both the dependency agent and the log analytics agent. Mm -hmm. 
And so in, we have assigned this to my environment. And so now I want to know, you know, I want more details on the compliance. So now we're using Azure Policy. We've deployed Azure Policy, and now we're going to use Azure Resource Manager. We're going to use this colossal hyperscale management tool for free in our environment uh, to do our bidding. You know, th that, that's for me, it's exciting. So and let's just uh, <laughs> let us be, let's just explain the audience what is it that we're seeing here, really. Like what we're seeing here is a bunch of Azure Rock enabled servers that, you know, obviously you onboarded as Azure Rock enabled servers. Those servers are assigned with a policy at the end of the day. That policy controls, in your case, right, controls the compliance and governance posture on those Azure Rock enabled servers. And you're doing it because of the fact you onboarded servers that are outside of Azure onto the control plane using that's Azure. right yeah you know, so that's I, really what we're saying here i assigned this initiative to the resource group where the azure arc servers are going to be onboarded yeah. before i onboarded them so, so that automatically when, it goes when yeah. they were onboarded they get boom is it a linux machine it gets these two agents is it a windows yeah. machine it gets these two agents cool. and and whether it's on-prem or whether it's in azure whatever the os it gets the identical treatment and so here so the what but what about machines that fall out of compliance they get rebuilt mm -hmm. um, they they maybe were pre-existing before you uh, had the policy and so we have a remediation uh, feature that that was i wanted to demo because for some people this is new or they haven't seen it um, mm -hmm. so uh, you know i've assigned this we know that two of my machines are missing something right and when yep. we click on the non-compliant tab we see there's the two machines mm -hmm. uh, and if and uh, so that we know we need to create a remediation task, we have a button here. And because this is an initiative, there's, you know, all of these policies are involved in the initiative. Mm -hmm. So like which, which ones, uh, you know, which ones were of the eight, I can actually look, you know, I can, I can go into each, each machine and I can see what they're missing. I can go to the uh, policies tab of a particular machine uh, mm -hmm. and it's gonna, it's going to show me you know, uh, yeah, just be laser this, focused on that machine, see what, you know, you know, what's what. But if I didn't know, and this is actually how it plays out in the real, real world generally, is mm -hmm. you're going to create a remediation task. And then one at a time, you're going to change this drop down to focus on a different, on a different agent. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, and until you find the ones that are missing, you know, uh, in this case, it was a uh, Windows uh, machine. So there, there's those two machines that were missing that particular agent. Right. Yeah. When I when I clicked on the Linux, because there's no Linux involved, there was nothing down here. So when I see machines with specific policy deficiencies, I just look, I just push the remediate button yeah. on this page and look, it's done. I don't have there's no it's one click, you know, yeah. and if I now went uh, into the remediation, you know, you can you can follow the progress mm -hmm. of these of these remediation tasks from the re remediation tab. And if I go there, look, they're already seconds, seconds ago, the, mach the, the task that I launched is yeah. executing. And those two machines, which are in, you know, on premise in a lab right now are getting this agent installed yeah. on them in real time. Um, and, yeah. and, and, you know, if I came back in, in 45 minutes after Azure Resource Manager has had a chance to reassess these machines for compliance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll notice that the number of non-compliant resources has gone down by two. Yeah, and that is that's the pro the way that you rapidly bring your machines into, into compliance, whatever agents they need. Uh, you know, I can say that for the security solution, the Qualys uh, vulnerability scanner agent deploys yeah. by extension in the same way. So uh, this extension-based management of your server resources, whatever the OS and wherever they are, with the same controls mm -hmm. from the same place. You know, if that doesn't get yeah. your blood boiling. <laughs> <laughs> it does mine it does mine Lior. yeah well you know steve i mean uh steve sorry steve is your friend so apologies for that i mean obviously uh but uh you know i have like for some reason i have steve because i know that you guys wrote the book which is a good segue um you know you guys have been doing great job and thanks for that short and sweet demo i wanted to ask you uh john what is the uh uh what talk to me a bit about like what type of advice you're going to give uh, a first time reader, someone that is, you know, bought the book, wants to, you know, wants to start getting their head wrapped around Azure Arc, what type of advice did you going to give them? I hear you. Well, I mean, everybody, I guess, you know, and I've even seen Microsoft training start to stratify it in this way. If you're a beginner, learn a specific task that's going to be of value to you, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so I'm not going to say that there's a one size fits all answer to that question, but I yeah. hope 
for the IT professional that that once they get over the initial uh, hurdle of using of using cloud tools, of they, they learn how policy works, they assign it, they see yeah. it in action. You know, uh, once that happens, I then you can start to be very strategic in your thinking, and you can again you can apply the hyperscale management techniques that Azure has perfected. Guys, they've perfected it. <laughs> you can be the smartest guy or gal. You won't do better than Microsoft to model how they do backup security, yeah. uh, disaster recovery, uh, compliance, updating. And and this is your way to snap into that. Yeah. And so you stop thinking of like, how should I do this? And you start thinking, well, how does, what's the best practice to do it the way they do in Azure? Right. Because right. you can now do that on-prem. And when you do that, wow, you know, what used to take two days takes like an hour. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm happy that you brought that up. And, you know, that's definitely a good advice. And I'm really enjoying talking to people like yourself that are very, um, that gets it, you know, that understand this notion of, okay, compliance posture at scale, governance at scale. How do you do that with Azure Arc? And really, you touched on, you know, a best practice notion, it's just a shameless plug. You know, I don't know if you've been following us, but, you know, last week we released the new Azure Arc enabled servers landings on Accelerator, which brings all these best practices together. Obviously, Azure policy is a big topic as part of that. So um, I'm happy that you're touching that. So, you know, uh, John, to wrap things up uh, with this uh, great Jump Spot Lightning episode, uh, very, I really enjoyed the conversation. So first of all, obviously, we're going to put a link in the description below uh, for, uh, for the book so people can go check it out, grab it from, uh, from Amazon, and just, uh, and just start getting uh, their head wrapped with Azure Rock enabled servers. Uh, John, for the audience that want to reach out to you, how they can do that? Sure. Uh, we got my Twitter handle right there uh, at John underscore Jordan. Just send me a DM, follow me. Um, it's a, it's a relatively small community of professionals, and I love love hearing from from my friends around the world anytime. Yeah, and thanks for everything that you do. Obviously, we're going to put in the description below uh, your uh, your Twitter handle and all the details that uh, the viewers need. And for the Jumpstart Lightning uh, uh, viewers. Thank you so much for supporting us. Please continue to support us by uh, subscribe to the channels. Give us a big like. It helps to support the channel and bring people and gentlemen like John into the into the show to talk about to talk about all the cool stuff that we're doing with Azure Hybrid and Azure Arc. So, John, thank you so much for joining me for this Jumps on Lightning episode. Um, appreciate it so much. And it's uh, been great. And for thank the you. audience, we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.